What up, kids? It's a beautiful day in Tallahassee. It was nice and cool out. Skies were very clear. I was with my friend Colby and Tanner, enjoying some NFL football, watching some great games like the Indianapolis Colts and the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Chiefs and the Vikings, as well as the Panthers and the Titans. And we got the notification on our phone from Bleacher Report that made this day even special. It stated that FSU has fired head coach Willie Taggart. We were, I was happy. We were happy. We announced it. People weren't paying attention. They were too busy watching the screens. And we all yelled out, Willie Taggart got fired. And people started cheering, yelling, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. No disrespect to a Willie Taggart, but he was not a good coach, both for stuff on the field and off the field. He's on his teams. We have led the nation. We were in penalties this year. I think we did a little better, but we're still like top 10. Sacks, one of the worst teams, one of the worst offensive lines in the country. Defense plays like crap. It, it was a mess. It, it was bad. And thank God that we got rid of him. It was ugly. Uh, we should have never hired him. I, I got to let, because I got to let people know, I haven't been cheered for Florida State. I've been cheered for Florida State since March of this year when I was accepted to attend Florida State University. And back that, and back a year before that, in January of 2018, when Taggart was announced to be the next head coach, I didn't like it. I never liked it because he, he, you can't go from being seven and five from an Oregon team with a lot of talent. They could have been way better that year without Taggart, and then he goes to Florida State in a piping hot mess that Jimbo left us, and we. What I was was right, but it got worse than I thought it would be. I said that, you know, Florida State, they're going to take a nice, a sharp decline. We're going to be eight, they're going to be eight and four and seven and five. They went five and seven last year. We already lowered the standard to be like, okay, just eight and four, seven and five, get a decent bowl game, and you're going to be on the hot seat, buddy. No, we were five and seven. And then we had to lower the standards again, saying, okay, bowl game, Tagger. All we want is a bowl game to celebrate our, our season, celebrating our, our season, going to great cities like Birmingham, Alabama, Shreveport, Louisiana, El Paso, Texas, Tampa Bay, Florida. And not the Outback Bowl, the Gasparilla. But no, four and five, 10 points away from being a, <laughs> 10 points away from being a seven and two team, might I add. Losses to Boise State at home. Losses to Virginia, the Wake Forest. Clemson, Miami, and a forgotten a forgotten gem, might I add, is that the week after Boise State, we beat Louisiana Monroe 45 to 44 in overtime. We won off a missed PAT. Well now, Taggart's gone. So what what's next? What is next? Odell Haggins, head coach. Well, the interim head coach for now, he, he was an interim before. He went 2-0 with wins over Louisiana Monroe to, for a post-hurricane uh, uh, makeup game. And then a win against Southern Miss in the Independence Bowl, averaging 42 points per game and 2-0. So, 
So what's the issue? What is the state of Florida State University? It's that Florida State has one of the worst grades, uh, um, academic grades in the country. Tamari on Terry, Cam Akers, Alex Hornibrook, Marvin Wilson, arguably our four best players we uh, our season. They're all gone next year. Uh, ticket sales are the worst in history for for the school. Back when this Doe Campbell Stadium could fit about forty something thousand people. We're, they're those seasons are still doing better than how we're selling tickets. It is an embarrassment. Florida State University is an embarrassment. I said it's a meme, it's a joke. It's it's a whole another level. It's an embarrassment. And it, and it was a two-pronged situation. One, and it could be fixed by both sides. One situation would could only been fixed by John Thrasher, or the president of Florida State University. And that was the situation with coaching. He got rid of that. The biggest one now is the students and the fans of Florida State University, mostly the students. And I know some people who are Florida State students, you're gonna hate me on this, but it is, it's, it's terrible. The attendance for students is just awful. It, it's embarrassing, it really is embarrassing. They give you free tickets to a football game and you don't take it. There's more people that I talk to during a week. They don't go to the games. They go to tailgates in Heritage Grove, to Pikes, Delta Chi, Sigma Pi, Vital, instead of going to the actual game. They go to Pop Bellies, where they illegally drink underage, instead of going to the game, where you could tailgate and also illegally drink underage for free. And yet here we are. And then yet they complain, those same people complain that the quality of football field and the quality of attendance, yet they do not attend football games. It's, it's embarrassing. It is embarrassing. Last week, if there were zero Miami fans that showed up, that stadium would have had maybe 45,000 people in it. That's embarrassing. Every home game, there should be at least 50 5,000, 60,000 Florida State fans in there, at least. And that's if those are games against like Miami or Florida. If it was against like Boise State, there should be 65 to 70,000 Florida State fans there. I should be, <coughs> excuse me, I should be struggling to get tickets every week. But no, it's easy. I get my tickets in less than a minute. It's a joke, it's embarrassing. I just do not like the situation that we have. Tagger was the first step. The university did its job. Now it's the, now it's the students' turns to fix it. And I know people are not gonna wanna go for a great game of Alabama State at Florida State University. And I'm gonna tell them I don't care. It's senior day. Celebrate. Good God. Can we have at least 50,000 people show up for Christ's sake? Based on how it's looking like, we're gonna get 30,000 people in that stadium. There's gonna be a lot of white benches just sitting. And this all really started about Jimbo leaving, the university wanting to be in the top 25. They cut funding out of football programs, basketball, baseball. <coughs> and what do you know it? It shows up on the field. I pray to God, I have praying to God that the coaching candidates have been rumored around for Florida State one of them show up, because any of them I'll take. I'll take Bob Stoops, Mark Stoops, Matt Campbell, PJ Fleck, Mike Leach, for Christ's sake, Brett Venables, the defensive coordinator out of Clemson. 
Finkel, the head coach out of Cincinnati. Candle, the head coach of Toledo. I don't care. They're all great. They're all great that can help fix this team. The problem is, is I am having the back of my head where for some reason we're not going to hire any of them. We're going to hire a random dude out of wherever. And he's just going to be the same like Willie. I am afraid of that. It's just that time where we just got to sit down and think. We got to start treating this team that this team is not a true contender. This team is not as it once used to be. So you have to rebuild. I don't think if you guys know about this, but our best players, they're all leaving. Blackman is going to start. Joey Gatewood might transfer and you know make a mess of things at quarterback. Because you got Jeff Sims out of Sandalwood coming. But even then, my high school, Barsham Trail High School, shut them down. When he when Jeff Sims went up against great talent, he couldn't get the job done. So do I trust Jeff Sims? I'm gonna go on a whole nother rant, you know, sooner or later about the situation of Jeff Sims and Carson Beck. Because these these two guys are four star recruits and they're getting shown up day in and day out by teams that aren't as good as them. But that's a whole nother situation. Florida State University is the situation right now. And the situation is that we have to win a road game at Boston College. If the running defense that showed up last week is Miami game, our rush defense, we gave up like 40 yards during the game or some crazy like that. That's what I want to see next week. Boston College, yeah, A.J. Dillon, one of the best running backs in the country. I've seen him play on television. It was Iowa and Boston College and the New Era Pinstripe Bowl. And A.J. Dillon could run. That was two years ago. He was a baby sophomore. Now he's a senior. He's got Brickley, his backup. He also is a productive player. This is a this is an incredible situation that baffles me that we have to go in at Boston College and win. If we don't win, it's over. It doesn't matter. We're not going to beat Florida. I accepted that at the beginning of the year. Dan Mullen's doing it right there. Well, you know, I just gotta just gotta think. I'm happy, but there's still a lot more. But firing Willie Tagger was the first step. Next is please, fans, show your support, students especially. Just go to the game, have fun, be there for a half. I really don't care. Just show up at the game, have fun, and that's all I ask. You know, next game is pretty much a guaranteed win, so might as well show up. Hell. Girls, it will help your Instagram saying, got that dub, or whatever. I got to get off before I, you know, I get on a whole nother subject. Thank you for watching. I'm sorry that you have to hear my complaining, but that's how it is. This is, you know, and I made you more of these about Florida State University. Thank you for watching. All right, peace out.